Hello everyone, my name is Saad Khalid and I'm a Solutions Engineer with F5. This video will demo the Application Services 3 extension tool, AS3 for short. This video assumes you are familiar with the F5 Automation toolchain on a high level. If you are not familiar with the F5 Automation toolchain, I recommend watching the Automation toolchain overview videos or reading up on the toolchain on CloudDocs. This video will focus on configuring your Big IP using the declarative interface AS3 provides. You can also automate your configuration of your Big IPs using Big IQ and AS3. This will not be discussed in this video. If you are interested in AS3's integration with Big IQ, please see below for the appropriate link. So what is AS3? Application Services 3 Extension, or AS3, is an F5 API that provides a flexible, low overhead mechanism for managing application-specific configurations on your Big IP, everything from layers 4 through 7. AS3 is a part of the open source F5 automation toolchain which includes declarative onboarding, AS3, and telemetry streaming. AS3 uses a declarative model, meaning you send a file containing the entire configuration you want to create using one single REST API call, rather than sending a series of individual commands. The declaration is written in JavaScript object notation format. AS3 also simplifies integration with CICD toolchains. Now let's dive straight into the demo. In this demo, we'll configure our Big IP using Postman as a RESTful API client. First, we'll authenticate to the Big IP using token authentication. We will store the content of the token in the Big IP token variable. We can now send a GET request to the App Services info endpoint to get information about the AS3 version and schema. We can also send a GET request to the App Services declare endpoint to see what has been deployed. Since there is nothing deployed right now, we get a 204 no content response. If we navigate to the Big IP user interface, we can confirm that there are no virtual servers or partitions on the Big IP, and the same is true for our Big IP in standby mode. For these two Big IPs, AutoSync has been configured. Now let's create and deploy a simple HTTP web application. In this declaration, we are creating one tenant called HTTP tenant, which has our app definition, virtual server, pool, and two pool members. Once I hit send, I receive a 200 OK response. Let's navigate to the Big IP to confirm the changes. On the Big IP, we will select the HTTP tenant partition on the top right. As you can see, the changes have been made and our application is functioning. We can also confirm the changes on the Big IP in standby mode. In order to support multi-tenancy, AS3 creates additional partitions to ensure that there is no impact to existing device configurations where both AS3 and legacy configuration methods are being used. AS3 only writes to the common partition when specifically defined in the JSON configuration file. This might be required for some use cases such as GSLB configurations. So what if we needed to add a second application to our existing partition? Well, since AS3 is declarative, you simply edit the existing configuration file by adding the appropriate content. Here you can see I've got the same declaration as before with a second application defined. Before I send this request, let's take a look at how I could validate my schema when composing declarations. You can use an IDE of your choice, but it is recommended to use Virtual Studio Code. Open up your declaration using VS Code. At the top, simply add the schema property with the value of the schema reference link which references the F5 Network's GitHub page. You can see a few squiggly lines representing some warnings or errors. We can navigate to the View Problems to inspect and fix all syntax errors and validate our configuration before sending the request. It's also important to note that when you're using AS3 to configure your Big IP, the source of truth is now the AS3 declaration. It is no longer on the Big IP. So if you use AS3 to create an app service, you must use AS3 to manage it through the app lifecycle and avoid out-of-band changes. Once we post our declaration, we can navigate to the Big IP to confirm the changes. Here you can see the original application as well as our new application. In our next example, we'll configure an HTTPS application with a web application firewall policy attached. As you can see, our WAF policy is working as expected. When you want to remove configuration objects, it's recommended to use POST with the desired end state to remove those objects because AS3 is declarative. For example, to remove a tenant, we just define an empty tenant in the configuration and we let the system figure out how to delete the virtual servers, pools, nodes, and other configuration objects. 
In this case, AS3 will also delete the tenant itself because it's empty. In our last example, let's take a quick look at how AS3 integrates with Ansible to configure your Big IP application services. This is a simple example that uses the URI module. However, there is a ATC Deploy F5 Ansible module that you should use. Once I run the playbook, I can navigate to the Big IP and confirm the changes. To learn more about F5's integration with Ansible, please visit CloudDocs. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of our demo. Thanks for watching.